What's going on guys? My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and in this video I'm going to talk about positioning things on the screen using the grid system in Kinter and Python. All right, in the last video we did our Hello World program and we positioned the stuff on the screen using Pack, which is a very, very simple and easy way to position things but doesn't give you a whole lot of control. In this video, I wanna talk about the grid system. It's a better way to position things on the screen and it's the, the way you're gonna use most of the time. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. So let's take a look at our code from last time. And remember, we use this pack. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to save as, let's save this as a different file. I'm gonna call this grid.py. And let's pull up our terminal real quick and just run this program, grid.py. And remember, I'm in C forward slash GUI, the directory I created for all of our files here. And we can pull this over and you can see here it is, just a very basic program, hello world. Now the thing to remember about this is, look what happens when we resize this. It stays in the middle, and we can play around with this all we want, and this stays right where it is. That's one of the nice things about Pack. It, it keeps it exactly where it's supposed to be, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of control. So going further in this video, we're gonna go ahead and look at the grid system. Now, the grid system is exactly like it sounds. It's a grid. So think of all of your programs as a grid. Grids have columns up and down, and they have rows left to right. And just visualize that in your head, and you pretty much understand the grid system. Now, we, we deal with the grid system using numbers. So you would say row zero to put it in the very top row, row one to put it in the next row, row two, row three, row four. Same thing with columns, column zero. It all starts with zero. Computers always start with zero, right? So column zero, column one, column two, column three. That's really all there is to it. Now, there's a couple of little tricky things you have to know, and we're gonna talk about those in this video, but really it's not too bad. So let's come over here and let's modify this code. So we have my label. I'm just gonna copy and paste these, and let's call this one my label one, and this one my label two. And we'll keep this one the same. And then for this one, let's just change it to my name is John Elder, right? So instead of packing these things in, we want to use the grid system. And it, it's really very simple. We just type in my label, my label one, and then dot grid, right? So instead of dot pack, it's dot grid. And same thing here. Let's go my label two dot grid. Now, inside of this parentheses, inside of this function, we need to just tell the program where we want these things. So let's go row equals zero and column equals zero. So I'm just gonna copy these down to here and let's change this to row one and column zero. So they're gonna be in the same column, one will be on top and one will be on bottom, right? Pretty simple. So go ahead and save this and let's run this and see if it's, it does what we expect this over. Oops. Hard to get a grab on it. There we go. So here we go. Hello world. And directly below it is my name is John Elder. Now you'll notice that the program itself is still just as big as the text. So it hasn't expanded any. We'll talk about that later. But here's the thing to see. Check this out. If we resize this, this stuff doesn't automatically resize. It stays right where it is row one, column, or row zero, column zero, row one, column zero. So that's one sort of thing to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and close this. Now let's play around with this a little bit. Pull our code back up. So let's say we want, well, let's just change this to column one, see what this looks like. So if we save this, I'm back here, and I'm just pressing up on my keyboard. It pasted in the last command. Okay, so now if we pull this over, we can see, and let's Pull up our code too. There we go. So row zero and row one. So this is row zero, left to right. This is row one. Remember the rows and the columns all start at zero. 
and column zero, so right here up and down, and this is column one right here up and down. So pretty straightforward. And one thing you have to realize about this that kind of stinks is that this is all relative. They're relative to each other. And what I mean by that is, look at this. If we change this from column one, my name is John Elder, let's change it to column five. Now if we save this and let's see, let's pull this back up. First, we need to close this. Now rerun it again. Pull it over and oh, look at that. It's the same as the last time. Even though we put column five, oops, come back, come back. It's still just, it looks like it's in column one, the second column over. Why? We're telling it column five. Well, because it's relative. There is nothing in column one, two, three, or four. So Kinter just ignores it, right? So if you wanted something there, you would have to go something like, uh, let's go, let's just copy this and call it my label three. And we might just put like nothing, right? And then we could come down here and let's just copy and paste my label three. And we could go, you know, two, one, doesn't matter. If we save this and let's close this. And now it's not gonna be a whole lot better. You can't you can't really tell because it's just nothing there. So there's there is another column in between these two. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's nothing in it. If we went, you know, something like this and saved this and ran it. Boom. Now you can really see the difference, right? So that's sort of a hacky way to do it. And there's lots of other ways to do this. And as we go forward, throughout this series of courses or the series of videos, I'm going to show you all kinds of tips and tricks on how to position things around using the grid system. In this video, I just wanted to short sort of if I could talk sort of show you that the grid system exists, give you the very basic fundamentals of it. So you can start playing around with it. Now one last thing I want to talk about before we end this video, let's just close this. And let's get rid of this, and get rid of this. Now, Python is object oriented. And you can do object -y type things with Python. And even though this is Kinter, it's still just Python, right? So we don't have to write our code like this. I always do because it's easier to sort of keep track of things. Remember in the last video, I said, doing everything in Kinter is a two step process. First, you create the thing, then you put the thing on the screen. So here, we're creating the things. And here, we're putting them onto the screen, right? Sure. That's really what you're going to want to do, but you don't have to since Python is object oriented. This dot grid is basically just an object -y sort of thing you can do. So instead of this, you can just slap this on the end. Same thing here. Right? If you're familiar with Ruby programming, we do a lot of stuff like this in Ruby, but you can do it in Python too, because it's object oriented. So you can just slap this on the end put a dot grid. Now, if we save this, come back to our terminal and run this again, we get the exact same thing as we would expect. It's just, we don't have to do it in two steps. We can do it in one step. That's great, right? But, you know, this is a very, very basic widget we're creating right here. And it's already pretty big, right? You really want to make it even bigger, even harder to read by doing stuff at the end? Eh, probably not. Maybe sometimes you do. I like cleaner code. And to me, doing it in two steps like this just seems cleaner. It's really a personal preference, but I would sort of recommend you doing it this way in the future. I just wanted to show you that that's possible just to kind of blow your minds a little bit and, <laughs> and uh, give you a little something to think about. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.